subject for today is solving equations with trig functions. This is not how to solve an equation using trig functions. This is how to solve an equation with trig functions in them. So we've done a little of this. Um, we've done mostly the trig part. And uh, I'm going to start off with with just a, a couple of simple problems to show you what I mean by the trig part. Uh, let's say we start with a very simple equation, sine of theta equals a half. Okay, and I want to know all the possible thetas that can solve this. Um, one thing we're going to find in, in most of the techniques we look at today, we want to end up with something like this uh, that we're going to know how to, how to deal with. Uh, because trig functions are periodic, we're usually going to get multiple solutions, an infinite number of solutions. Uh, but we still we want, to, we want to get all of them. So, of course, uh, Following the dictates of solving an equation, we want to get theta all by itself. So we find the inverse sine function of both sides. And get theta is the inverse sine of one half. We don't just want the primary value of this, we want all the values. So uh, We think about the unit circle, and if the sine is a half, we have a triangle with a hypotenuse of one, the side of a half, and square root of three over two. This, of course, is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So this angle here is 30 degrees or pi over six. So we have theta equal pi over six. Well, first thing we want to do is find out what are all the solutions in just the first two pi in the unit circle. The sine is the y coordinate. So if we think about a horizontal line across here, we know that there's going to be another solution. Uh, this will be the supplement of this angle pi minus pi over 6, or 5 pi over 6. So those are the two solutions in the unit circle. But then, of course, every time we go around the circle, we get another solution. So we can expand this. Theta is pi over 6 plus 2 pi n, and 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi and where n is some integer. So that's how we find all the solutions to this equation. Uh, now, this is, this is a nice, easy problem. We happen to know a special triangle for which a half is the sign. That might not always be the case. Uh, you might get a problem that you might want to use your calculator for. So as an example, if I have the cosine of theta equals 0.65, or theta equals the inverse cosine of 0.65, I might want to use my calculator on this one use the calculator's inverse cosine function. And I would get that this is approximately 0.863. So again, I think about an angle 
whose cosine is well, whose uh, cosine is 0.65. Here we have an angle of 0.863. That's in radians, of course. But again, you know, here we have a vertical line. This tells me that there's another value down here, which is negative 0.863. Or if you like, 2 pi minus 0.863, which is about 5.42. So now I have my theta is equal to 0.863, 5.42. But again, each of these is going to repeat as I go around the circle. So the complete solution would be h63 plus 2 pi and 4, 5.42 plus 2 pi n. Okay, so those are all my solutions. If somehow uh, one was stuck, if this is a problem and didn't have a calculator, or maybe even worse, if the evil professor said, I want an exact solution. These are not exact solutions. They're approximations I get from using the calculator. Well, that, that's not so bad. I, I could just go back. I could just say, what is the, this exactly? This is exactly the inverse cosine of 0.65 plus 2 pi n. And this, we could just write this as cosine minus 1, inverse cosine 0.65 plus 2 pi. I don't, I don't want to do that. Minus the cosine 0 0.625, 0 0.65 plus 2 pi. In other words, uh, well, that's not this, but this is this plus 2 pi. So it's all the same. Okay, so that's that's how you that's kind of the end game. Uh, you have a trig function equal to some value, you use the inverse, you find the values inside the unit circle, and then you add on the periodicity part. Uh, of course, if this was a tangent, the period wouldn't be two pi, it would be what would the period of pi be of, of the tangent function be. something you need to know. You want to remember the period of the tangent function? Pi. Yeah, just pi. So you just have pi n as a tangent function. OK. Uh, let's look at something a little more complicated. Uh, some problems where you might need to do some factoring. So recall that if, if I had an equation like this, x squared plus 2x, 0, that I can factor this. So I have x times x plus 2 equals 0. And now I know that if two things multiplied together equal zero, either one of them being zero is a solution. So the solutions to this would be x equals zero, or x plus two equals zero, meaning x equals minus two. We're going to do the same thing, only now there's a trig function involved. So let's take as a problem 5 sine of theta, cosine of theta, plus 4 cosine of theta equals 0. Well, if I hadn't said what I just said, this, this might look like a very imposing problem. I mean, there's no inverse function I can apply directly, and, 
I don't see any, any obvious way to combine these to get down to this one trig function. But I can see that there's a common factor in the cosine theta. So I can factor that out, cosine theta, I of sine theta plus 4 equals 0. So that tells me I can get solutions to this equation either when cosine of theta equals 0 or sine of theta equals minus 4 fifths. Right. Well, now we just have to go through that, that process again. Theta is the inverse cosine of 0. So where is the cosine 0? Think about that. Oh, where's the cosine 0? Well, there, there are two places, right? I think of my unit circle. Where is the distance along the x-axis 0? Well, here and here. So cosine of minus, cos, inverse cosine of 0 is pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2. Uh, sine of theta minus 4 fifths. Well, that's going to be down here somewhere. So now, my final step, right, I take each of these, pi over 2 plus 2 pi n, and 3 pi over 2 plus 2 pi n, but I can, I can consolidate that, that's just pi over 2 plus pi n, but also uh, negative 0.927 plus 2 pi n, and 5 plus 0.927 plus 2 pi n. I'm, I'm skipping some steps. I could add these or I could you know, put this you know, inside the first positive loop around the circle. But um, you get the idea. There's a lot of solutions here. so far. All right. Um, okay, that simple factoring worked pretty well. We might find something Sine squared theta minus 7 cosine theta plus 3 equals 0. And it looks a little imposing at first. It might help to think of, since we just have one trig function, cosine theta, it might help to do a substitution here. Let's set x equal cosine theta. With 
So let's see what, what that gives us. That's 2x squared minus 7x plus 3 equals 0. This is something we're very familiar with. It's a quadratic. We're either going to solve it by factoring it using FOIL or, worst case, the, use the quadratic formula. So let's try this. Like 2x and x. Where does the 3 go? It goes here. We have two minuses because minus 2x plus minus x is minus 7x. Okay, that's good. So this tells me uh, x equals 1 half. This tells me x equals 3. So I have the cosine of theta equal to 1 half or 3. Or the inverse. The theta equals the inverse, one half, or theta equals the inverse three, inverse cosine three. All right, this, this problem is so much like the first one we did. I'm, I'm not going to do this one. We know cosine is uh, going to be a half of pi over three, and then negative pi over three, so that gives us some solutions. Uh, what about cos inverse cosine of 3? What's that? What kind of solution do I get out of that? cosine, its domain is going to be 1 to minus 1. You have inverse functions, their domains and ranges switch. Well, if you do it right, the domain on this function, the cosine, of course, is all real numbers, but in order to make it inverse, we have to truncate it, right? We have to limit it from 0 to pi. So that would be the, the range, the domain of the truncated cosine function would be the range of the inverse. OK, so this doesn't give us any solutions. That's fine. Uh, all our solutions to this come out of this, uh, out of this term. Uh, this, again, was a nice problem was nice in that factored nicely. Uh, that might not always be the case. Let's take a look at uh, sine cosine squared theta minus six cosine theta minus one equals zero. Okay. Uh, so I encourage you when you do these, if this helps, to take the extra step of making it look like something you're familiar with. If you need this, you can just see immediately that the cosine is just x here, then you can skip this step. Uh, using quadratic formula, I get 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 minus or minus, so plus 4ac, 36 over 18. 
and this will simplify down to 1 plus or minus the square root of 2 over 3. So we have the cosine of theta equals 1 plus or minus the square root of, well, let me write them both down. One plus square root of two over three, and one minus square root of two over three. Uh, before we go any further, as we've learned, we, we should at least check to see if these values are going to fit the domain of the inverse uh, cosine function. Uh, square root of two is about one point four. One plus one point four, two point four divided by three. Yeah, that's going to be between one and minus one. Now we have 1 minus the square root of 2. That's going to be negative 0.4 divided by 3. Okay, they're all good. So what's going to happen now? Um, I mean, I like keeping the you know, I like keeping these exact values. You can always plug them into the calculator later. But we know theta will equal the inverse cosine of 1 plus square root of 2 over 3. Well, that's going to be in the first quadrant. So there's going to also be a value in the fourth quadrant. That would be negative cosine of inverse of 1 plus square root of 2 over 3. And this guy, uh, cosine of a negative, that's going to be in which quadrant? Where's the, uh, it's going to be over here somewhere, right? So there's going to be two values here inverse cosine of this, and then we're going to have another angle down here we're going to have to include. And then as always, we, you know, we just throw in plus 2 pi n, and we're going to get all the solutions. Probably easier to do this with a calculator, at least initially. All right, any questions about these problems so far? Uh, I want to emphasize that Aside from this last step we always do, where we try and figure out what the multiple solutions are, we're just using techniques that we should know from algebra for solving equations in a single variable. Sorry, I interrupted. Any, any questions? Okay, so there are more complicated things that can happen. In one case here, we had sines and cosines, but after we were done factoring, that was not an issue. But what if we have more than one trig function in our equation? I mean, we still just have one variable, theta, but we, we haven't really dealt with, dealt with this before. What if we had an equation like this? Sine theta plus 1 equals sine theta. So this is a, this is a problem in the book. Uh, I don't like the way they went around about it. They just magically say, let's do this. It solves the problem. They don't really tell you where the, this comes from. But uh, what I do like about it is it just has a sine and a cosine in it. And if you think about it, no matter what trig functions, no matter what trig functions we use, we can always replace them with sines and cosines. Uh, so while this is a very simple, simple version, at least we know any equation with trig functions we, we could get to just be sines and cosines, and then we have to deal with that. 
So, uh, so far the strategy we've used had to do with you know, using one of these, the sine, the theta, and the cosine of theta as a single variable. So it would be nice if we could convert this. So it has just one tree function. Well, it turns out there's a, an identity that will help us do that. It's the Pythagorean identity. Because we can solve this for sine of theta. This is a really, really useful piece of information. Sine squared theta equals 1 minus cosine squared theta. So sine of theta is the square root of 1 minus cosine squared theta. So we can substitute that here. Cosine of theta plus 1 equals square root of 1 minus cosine squared theta. Okay. Well, we're a little closer. We, we solved the initial problem. Uh, but we have another problem now. Uh, probably, again, might help to replace cosine theta, at least temporarily, with an x, and minus x squared. So how would we go about solving this equation? What would be our next step? So we have 2x squared plus 2x equals 0. Well, that's nice. We can factor this. This is, we take out the 2, and we just have x times x plus 1 equals 0. Well, so x is 0 or minus 1. <coughs> that is, the cosine of theta equals 0, or the cosine of theta equals minus 1. Let's look into that now. Where is the cosine of theta zero? Did we do that already? I think we did. Cosine is zero here and here. So uh, theta could be pi over two plus pi n, right? We just end up with uh, pi periodicity here on the solution. Uh, where is cosine minus 1? That should jump into your head pretty quickly, too. Where's the cosine minus 1? Pi. At pi, yeah. Suppose on the exam you could plug that into the calculator and hope it would work. Right, but uh, as I said, I, I, I have some concern. 
some concern about the possibility of a phantom root. So let's let's try these now. Make sure they work. Let's start with pi over two. Cosine of pi over two plus one equals sine of pi over two. Cosine of pi over two is zero. Plus one equals the sine of pi over two one. Oh, that's good. All right. Uh, I better check this solution down here though. Cosine of three pi over two plus one equals sine of three pi over two. So cosine of three pi over two is what? isn't a solution, so we're really just going to have to leave this as 2 pi in. All right, our last one, uh, let's see about pi. Uh, cosine of pi plus 1 equals sine of pi. Cosine of pi is Here. So what's the uh, x coordinate over there? Negative 1. Negative 1 plus 1 equals sine of pi. Well, I know that. That's 0. So that works. Okay. So, all right. Um, in a way, Really, this really answers the question. We, we might have some really complex equation. We could convert it all to sines and cosines, and we could make them all one, either sine or cosine. And, and we might have a mess. We might have an equation that would be difficult to solve for x, but we would get, we would find some x's somehow, and, and then we do this last step where we find the inverse function figure out the periodicity. Um, there, there's one more, we'll call it a gotcha here, you have to be aware of. Cavalier just throwing in this 2 pi n. Uh, that's, that's always worked because sines and cosines that we've been using have that period. You know, if something's a solution for some value, it's got to be a solution for that value plus 2 pi, plus 4 pi, plus 6 pi, because the function is periodic, it's going to have the same value. Uh, there are circumstances where we have to be a little more careful. Uh, let's take, take a very simple problem. Uh, 2 sine 3 theta minus 1 equals 0. All right. Well, I can solve for sine of 3, 3 theta, that's 1 half. It's very similar to a problem we did before. Uh, it might be good at this point to just ponder for a second. What's the period of sine of 3 theta? Hmm. It's sine of 3 theta. 
might want to recollect at one point we were graphing and we looked at y equals a sine of b times x minus c plus t. We looked at all these possible constants here. Uh, a was the amplitude, b was a vertical shift, c was a horizontal shift, and then we have b. What did b tell us? Told us something about the period, didn't it? That's, that's what 3 is here. So what's the relationship between b and the period of the function? I have like the sine theta, so its period is 2 pi, the sine of theta. I want to graph the sine of 2 theta. What's that do to the period? Yes, it's okay. It's safe here. Didn't you confer about that? Isn't it just like stretching by like two or like in this case three? Mm -hmm. Like stretching, so you're multiplying all the like point by three. That's the stretch. You're competing with the car outside. Isn't it just like stretching? Um, stretching! Okay, stretching and squeezing, yeah it is. But what is the, what's the period now of sine of 2 pi? Of 2 theta? Mm -hmm. Sine of theta is 2 pi. Is this going to stretch it out or is it going to squeeze it in? Does anyone recall? Squeeze those. Squeeze those. It's going to squeeze it in, yeah. We're going to get like that. This is going to have a period of pi. If I use a fraction here, like a fraction of 1, it will it'll stretch it out. This is not just true of trig functions, right? This is a general thing we, we look at, transformations. OK, so the relationship is. The period for sine and cosine is 2 pi divided by b, or absolute value of b, so the period is a positive number. Uh, this is for sine and cosine and secant and cosecant. And what is it for tangent and cotangent? Yeah, exactly. Okay, so I'm glad we refreshed on that. So now I want to look back at this. Say, what's the period of the sine of three theta?
plugging question. Remember what the equation was. Here, I'll put it back. Period equals 2 pi over b. So we plug in 3, and we get it's 2 pi over 3. So that's, that's the periodicity of sine of 3 theta. It's something to be concerned about. Not quite yet. Okay, so uh, what we would have done before is we would have taken the inverse sine of both sides, and we get 3 theta equals inverse sine of a half, which we know in the First two pi is going to be pi over what? Pi over six and five pi over six. Well, at this point, there are two ways to deal with finding the rest of the solutions. Well, <laughs> There's two right ways. <laughs> There's the wrong way. <laughs> Let me show you the wrong way. The wrong way is you go, well, this is 3 theta. Let's divide through. That's pi over 18 plus 2 pi n. And 5 pi over 18 plus 2 pi n. Uh, I say this is the wrong way because you're going to miss a lot of the solutions. The problem is that the period of this function is not 2 pi, it's <coughs> 2 pi over 3. So that would be one way to do it correctly, is to be very clear about what the periodicity is here. Uh, there's another way you could go about it, though, it would also work. You could say, well, 3 theta, that's the inverse of sine of 3 theta, the inverse sine of sine of 3 theta. I know that that's, that's pi over 6 plus 2 pi n, or it's 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n. And divide that, right? If I plug in pi over six into the sine, I'm going to get a half, right? If I plug in pi over six plus two pi n, I'm going to get a half. What I want to know is, you know, what's a third of that value? So if I divide through by three now, I'll, I'll get this. And that would be the correct answer. That would get you all the solutions. All right, so, so summing up here, we have some equation with sines and cosines and maybe tangents. Convert it to all sines and cosines, and if necessary, you might have to convert everything to sine or everything to cosine. Uh, we we can then look at, at that uh, trig function as a as a variable and use whatever uh, strategies we have for solving equations. And then, as a last step, we have to look at. Uh, finding the extra values because of periodicity and, and maybe checking checking for phantom roots. Um, we're, we're not gonna we're not gonna do anything really difficult, but you know if, if I gave you some kind of crazy equation like sine to the fifth of theta plus three sine u cubed theta plus one equals zero. I don't really know if we can solve this, but you could you could just go in and just say, all right, 
x to the fifth plus 3x cubed plus 1 equals 0. Uh, can I find a solution to that? Maybe, maybe not. Use the rational root theorem, right? I see the only rational roots are 1 and minus 1. So that none of those are going to work. Uh, but I have a, I have a tool, a set of tools to, to work on this. And if I can find, you know, values for this, I can set the sine of theta to that value and come up with solutions. So that's, that's the basic idea here. Any, any questions? Any of this? All right, well, that will be all for today. Um, I'll be in my office hours.